Dad's own county of Yorkshire and I've got the uh, Airhawk AS seat fitted and I've had to stop already because it's quite apparent that I've got too much air in it and I'm bouncing about summit shocking so just let me pitch here and uh, let some air out I think there's a bit of trial and error with this uh, with this seat uh, but it was a necessary purchase because this Honda Crosstourer OEM seat it's a perfectly good seat but by heck after a couple of hours talk about a sore ass so trick here is turn valve anti-clockwise and just let a bit of air out supposed to sink into the seat apparently and it says it's just about right when your ass is half an inch off the main saddle well how the bloody hell are you supposed to test that then what are you supposed to put a bloody feeler gauge under your ass and find out how much space there is there could be interesting but what I don't want to do is be on and off this bike like a gigolo's condom blowing into the seat to inflate it, getting off, deflating it 20 times during every journey to get it right so let's try that now I've read good reports about these Airhawk seats as a cure to the the cross tourer sore ass syndrome and uh, so I've high hopes of it really but I have to say initially it does rather have the feel of a medical appliance <laughs> you know for somebody that might have a bit of an arsehole problem but uh, probably best uh, not to go into too much detail about that but uh, any road up it feels a bit like you've shit yourself when you when you sat on it which is a bit disconcerting uh, yeah it does it feels like you shit yourself in uh, in a pair of uh, sealed trolleys and now can escape it's got that that rather disconcerting uh, feel about it but anyway apologies for the rather uh, lurid description but that's the best analogy that I can draw at this moment and I don't think you'll find many reviews of the Airhawk inflatable seat pad that liken the feeling to one of having filled one's trousers but that's what it's like maybe I'll get used to it yes quite strange but if it cures the problem well and good yeah, I went for a ride the other day. It's quite a long ride, one of my favourite routes. Uh, which is... Uh, sort of Otley Blubber Houses, Pateley Bridge, uh, up to Loft House, Leighton Reservoir, and then on to Middleham, and, uh, and then on to Hawes in Wensleydale, and over the... Uh, over past the Ribble Head Viaduct and uh, to Ingleton and back down the A65 and it's like 
two and a half hours in the saddle <coughs> and without a brake your ass hurts it's as simple as that well mine did and i know a lot of people raise an issue with this so uh, pretty soon on the channel i'm going to be doing a sort of medium term <coughs> owner's review in-depth review of this bike honda vfr 1200 x cross tourer which i think is absolutely brilliant and i'm probably going to title it something like uh, 10 things that you absolutely need to know about this bike and will be the the five really good things and five not so good things that really you need to be uh, be aware of before buying one of these either used or brand new and according to the web the um, on the website you can still buy these brand new and i'd been given to understand <coughs> from various sources that honda weren't making this fantastic machine anymore and the, that they were unlikely to update it so this and the pan-european really sort of almost become the orphans of the honda family um, but according to the website because the honda websites tend to classify their bikes by genre or type and under the sort of adventure category adventure touring category no just the adventure category there is the honda africa twin and there is still this but uh, speaking of uh, used motorcycles yeah there's um there's currently a, a shortage of used motorcycles um attributed to the uh to the pandemic and uh, i assume that's because um people haven't traded up this year so they haven't part x uh, the machines for new machines and, and because that hasn't happened and, and perhaps because there have been proportionally more purchases of used bikes than new bikes because obviously the um, the economic downturn has caused uh, a lot of concern amongst people and maybe they don't want to splash out tie themselves down to a PCP for two or three years or splash out a load of cash so anyway got a long story short there's a shortage of uh, second hand machines which sort of says to me you should have a bit of leverage if you are chopping your bike in um, but would also mean if you're going to buy a second hand bike you might not be able to chip down the uh, the dealership quite so much and I first hand experience of that yesterday I went with a mate of mine Trevor uh, he's, he's looking to buy uh, uh, God knows why bloody horrible bike but anyway he's looking to buy a Honda Deauville NT650 the later ones were 700 but he's been looking at an NT650 and we're looking one at Apple Yards in Keithley uh, 20 year old bike in good condition on it less than 11,000 miles on the clock but they've got it up for 2999 3 grand and uh, sort of Trevor's got a bit of wit about him he's been in, in motor trade all his life he's got a little bit of uh, wit and repartee about him which doesn't always go down well with dealerships depends what sort of sense of humour they've got I don't think this fella had any sense of humour or if he did it had been surgically removed that morning but Trevor sort of cheekily says to him uh, you know, I like the look of that uh, Honda Deauville, but there's only one thing spoiling it, and that's uh, the fact that there's a fault on your printer. So the fella says, what do you mean there's a fault on uh, on printer? He says, well, when you've printed out that uh, that price tag there, there's nines where there should be fours and fives, so I think you've got a fault on your printer, and it's just spoiling look at bike, you know. Uh, and that went down like a bloody lead carsy. And uh, I think in normal times you could have reasonably gone with a bike like that and, and started at two grand and probably ended up in the middle at two and a half. But they were having none of it. You know, I think 100 quid max is all that they're the taking off it. For a bike, albeit a Honda, that I wouldn't be seen proverbially dead on. But any road up. 
that seems to be the general situation so there's a certain equilibrium to it isn't it you know there's a certain equilibrium there that uh, if there's a dearth of, uh, of used bike stock then uh, you've got some leverage if you're trading in but if you're buying second hand you've got less leverage because dealers are going to do what that fella said yesterday and basically tell you to piss off anyway so I digress yet it's like bloody Ronnie Corbett this isn't it digressing from main tail which is just to give you the heads up that uh, I'm going to be doing a more detailed long term or medium to long term second review of this bike and I'm sort of settling down into this um, air hawk seat now it feels all right see how we get on other thing I'm going to be doing um, some of you might know <clears throat> I've got an old 2009 BMW R1200 GS Adventure and I've had two or three goes at changing the colour scheme on that bike and I thought the last one it was so good the finish I thought that's it that's fantastic that dark red colour red and gold uh, but I parked the bike up in the sun for three or four hours the other day and the, the paint on the tank split from bloody arsehole to breakfast time thought somebody scratched it at first but it's, it's a perfect split between the layers of paintwork so we've cocked up somewhere there in, in the prepping without a shadow of a doubt because the other panels that didn't have paint on them to start with they're fine but the tank that already had uh, an additional layer of paint on when I tried to spray paint it green and I, and I thought I'd sealed it all off with the uh, two pack primer and rest it, it tamp work, the whole bloody lot split open right down the tank so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to paint it in a non sort of non-standard colour but not a ridiculous non-standard colour like that bike currently is so 2009 GS Adventure they came in two colours magnesium silver which was what mine was originally which is about as, as boring as a wet fortnight in Blackpool horrible colour rancid horrible and uh, uh, red and it wasn't a very inspiring red it was a sort of bloody 1973 Morris Marina red type colour so uh, I don't want to go down that route but I will go down a BMW colour route so at some point later in the manufacturing cycle they did do those bikes in black and that so I'm thinking black and gold like the um, the 2018-2019 BMW R90 uh, racer uh, that's not a bike I would ever have I just don't like the look of them but one of them you can get in black and gold but they call it I think it's Storm Black Metallic and Aurum, A-U-R-U-M, which obviously A-U, gold, Aurum, Aurum being the Latin word for gold, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I think I'll go down that route, but I'll, I'll seize the opportunity while I'm doing it. I'll order the paints and I'll just take the bike apart and get it minted up for, uh, for next spring and hopefully next spring will uh, uh, bring us some uh, more positive horizons to aim, aim at from a biking point of view because 2020 is just in spite of the early magnificent weather 2020 is just been a bit of a biking disaster really globally so I'm going to do that and I'll, I'll cover it episodically as they say I'll do some episodes on YouTube as I go on but I'll probably strip the whole thing down and you know just try and mint it up the best that I can so there'll be that coming as well and uh, other than that um, I hope to be getting out a fair bit more with what's left of the season on some trips of, uh, that might be of interest uh, so I'm hoping for a good bit more activity on the channel 
over the coming weeks and months. So that's it for now, just a quick update. As uh, I circumnavigate the uh, Bradford Inner Ring Road, which is sort of the Bradford Bypass, just, which is probably why it's so bloody popular. <laughs> Oh yeah, forgot to mention, <coughs> cameras. I'm using three cameras now, I've gone on a GoPro, so I've got a Hero 3 Plus, a Hero 4, which is filming my fat face here, as I'm talking to you, and the main uh, helmet camera now, I've got a GoPro Hero 7, black. Um, and you have to buy all sorts of bloody accessories and adapters and microphones and what have you to, to be able to get a, a remote mic attached to anything GoPro but anyway, fingers crossed that it's working the um, Drift Ghost X that you can probably see on my helmet here that packed in, or rather the, the mini USB port has become faulty to the point where uh, the remote mic won't work and that port's also used for charging and you have to fiddle about with the lead, get it in a certain position to charge so I can just about get it charged, I'm just using that basically as the equivalent of a dash cam especially when I'm riding through this shithole let me tell you standard of driving around here period is appalling verging on criminal and whilst it will be easy for me to criticize my former colleagues in the police for doing knack all about it I appreciate that policing numbers since dear Mr Cameron's comprehensive spending review with Mr Osborne in 2010 policing numbers have dropped dramatically and disproportionately so amongst road policing or roads policing it used to be called road traffic when I were in job I were a traffic cop for a period um, I was about to say something really controversial then because uh, the last job I had in the cops was as a tactical firearms commander but uh, I'll not actually uh, pursue that narrative I don't think just yet I'll have to have a little think about it but um, I don't know what it is about Bradford but as soon as you get anywhere near the centre of Bradford you seem to have to adopt your driving or riding um, in a very very defensive way there's an example any road up um, so yeah, I hope I hope the audio is good because I'm sick of arsing around with different adapters and leads and GoPro gear. And it's not cheap. The mic adapter for this uh, Hero Seven Black it's fifty quid on Amazon. Fifty quid. It's just an adapter, but no else works. Nothing. So you're, uh, you know, you're obliged to uh, to fork the money out if you want to do what I'm doing now. It's a bit more straightforward on the earlier models. Anything anything before a GoPro Hero Five, it's a bit more straightforward because <coughs> you, you can get other aftermarket um, mics and adapters that that do seem to work reasonably well. 
but the GoPro one is the only one that you can use with the Hero 7 Black as far as I'm aware and therefore it's 50 quid for a bit of wire and plastic so it better well bloody well be working supremely as I speak to you of course if it hasn't worked you won't see this or hear it for that matter uh, but anyway that's just something that I uh, just thought I'd better mention before I sign off again so I'll have a second attempt at signing off now so I'm just on my way to Squires again for a pot of steam and uh, so I'll catch you up the next time around which shouldn't be too long now and until then yet again ride safe and above all be kind <laughs>